не учим, а практикуем. Играем в английский от души. Свободный мощный тренажер. Оксин Лишбот. Телеграм. Пока я делал эти вещи, я постоянно пытался подумать о каком-то пути, как сбежать с острова. While I was doing these things, I was always trying to think of some way to escape from the island. Правда? True. Я жил там с большими удобствами. I was living there with much comfort. Я был счастливее, чем был когда-либо, пока плавал по морям. I was happier than I had ever been while sailing the seas. Но я очень хотел увидеть других людей. But I longed to see other men. Я очень хотел увидеть дом и друзей. I longed for home and friends. Вы, наверное, помните, что когда я был на дальней стороне острова, you will remember that when I was over at the farther side of the island, Я видел в отдалении землю. I had seen land in the distance. 50 или 60 миль воды лежало между мной и той землей. Fifty or sixty miles of water lay between me and that land. Но я всегда желал, чтобы я мог достичь ее. Yet I was always wishing that I could reach it. Это глупое желание. It was a foolish wish. Потому что трудно было предположить, что я мог бы найти на том далеком берегу. For there was no telling what I might find on that distant shore. Возможно, это было намного худшее место, чем мой маленький остров. Perhaps it was a far worse place than my little island. Возможно, там были дикие звери. Perhaps there were savage beasts there. Возможно, дикие люди жили там, которые могли убить меня и съесть. Perhaps wild men lived there who would kill me and eat me. Я думал обо всех этих вещах. I thought of all these things. Но я желал скорее рискнуть любой опасностью, чем оставаться, где я был. But I was willing to risk every kind of danger rather than stay where I was. Наконец я решил построить лодку. At last I made up my mind to build a boat. Она должна быть достаточно большой, чтобы перевести меня и все, что принадлежало мне. It should be large enough to carry me and all that belong to me. Она 
Она должна быть достаточно крепкой, чтобы выдержать долгое путешествие по штормящим морям. It should be strong enough to stand a long voyage over stormy seas. Я видел большие каноэ, которые индейцы иногда делают из стволов деревьев. I had seen the great canoes, which Indians sometimes make of the trunks of trees. Я захотел сделать каноэ того же вида. I would make one of the same kind. В лесу я нашел кедр. In the woods I found a cedar tree. Который, я думал, был как раз подходящим для моего каноэ. Which I thought was just the right thing for my canoe. Это было огромное дерево. It was a huge tree. Его ствол был более пяти футов в диаметре у нижней части. Its trunk was more than five feet through at the bottom. Я рубил и вырубал много дней, прежде чем он упал на землю. I chopped and hewed many days before it fell to the ground. Потребовалось две недели, чтобы вырезать из него бревно нужной длины. It took two weeks to cut a log of the right length from it. Затем я приступил к работе над бревном. Then I went to work on the log. Я рубил и вырубал. I chopped and hewed. И придал ему снаружи форму каноэ. And shaped the outside into the form of a canoe. Топориком и долотом я выдолбил полость внутри. With hatchet and chisel I hollowed out the inside. Полных три месяца я работал над этим кедровым бревном. For full three months I worked on that cedar log. Я был горд и рад, когда каноэ было закончено. I was both proud and glad when the canoe was finished. Я никогда не видел такой большой лодки, сделанной из одного целого дерева. I had never seen so big a boat made from a single tree. Она была изящной и красивой. It was well shaped and handsome. Более двадцати человек могли бы найти место, чтобы сесть в ней. More than twenty men might find room to sit in it. Но теперь самый сложный из вопросов должен быть решен. But now the hardest question of all must be answered. Как я смогу доставить мое каноэ на воду? How was I to get my canoe into the water? 
Оно лежало не более чем в трехстах футах от речки. It lay not more than 300 feet from the little river. Где я впервые причалил с моим платом. Where I had first landed with my raft. Но как я должен был сдвинуть его на 300 футов или даже на один фут? But how was I to move it 300 feet, or even one foot? Оно было таким тяжелым, что я не мог даже перевернуть его. It was so heavy that I could not even roll it over. Я придумал несколько планов. I thought of several plans. Но когда я подошел к подсчету времени труда, But when I came to reckon the time and the labor, я обнаружил, что даже при самом простом плане потребовалось бы 20 лет, чтобы спустить каной на воду. I found that even by the easiest plan it would take 20 years to get the canoe into the water. Что я мог сделать, кроме как оставить его в лесу, где оно лежало? What could I do but leave it in the woods where it lay? Каким глупым я был? How foolish I had been. Почему я не подумал о весе каноэ перед тем, как начать работу по созданию его? Why had I not thought of the weight of the canoe before going to the labor of making it? Мудрый человек всегда посмотрит, прежде чем прыгнет. The wise man will always look before he leaps. Я определенно не действовал мудро. I certainly had not acted wisely. Я вернулся в мой замок. I went back to my castle. Чувствуя себя грустным и задумчивым. Feeling sad and thoughtful. Почему я должен быть неудовлетворенным и несчастным? Why should I be discontented and unhappy? Я был владельцем всего, что я видел. I was the master of all that I saw. Я мог назвать себя королем острова. I might call myself the king of the island. У меня были все удобства жизни. I had all the comforts of life. У меня была еда в изобилии. I had food in plenty. Я мог вырастить корабли зерна. I might raise shiploads of grain. Но для него не было рынка. But there was no market for it. У меня были тысячи деревьев для лесоматериалов и топлива. 
I had thousands of trees for timber and fuel. Но никто не хотел покупать. But no one wished to buy. Я пересчитал деньги, которые я принес с корабля. I counted the money which I had brought from the ship. Свыше ста монет золота и серебра. There were above a hundred pieces of gold and silver. Но какая польза от них? But of what use were they? Я отдал бы все за горст гороха и бобов, которые можно было бы посеять. I would have given all for a handful of peas or beans to plant. Я отдал бы все за бутылку чернил. I would have given all for a bottle of ink. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Robinson Crusoe written anew for children by James Baldwin. I build a big canoe. While I was doing these things, I was always trying to think of some way to escape from the island. True, I was living there with much comfort. I was happier than I had ever been while sailing the seas. But I longed to see other men. I longed for home and friends. You will remember that when I was over at the farther side of the island, I had seen land in the distance, fifty or such miles of water lay between me and that land. Yet I was always wishing that I could reach it. It was a foolish wish, for there was no telling what I might find on that distant shore. Perhaps it was a far worse place than my little island. Perhaps there were savage beasts there. Perhaps wild men there would kill me and eat me. I thought of all these things. But I was willing to risk every kind of danger rather than stay where I was. At last I made up my mind to build a boat. It should be large enough to carry me and all that belonged to me. It should be strong enough to stand a long voyage over stormy seas. I had seen the great canoes which Indians sometimes make of the trunks of trees. I would make one of the same kind. In the woods I found a cedar tree which I thought was just the right thing for my canoe. It was a huge tree. Its trunk was more than five feet through at the bottom. I chopped and hewed many days before it fell to the ground. It took two weeks to cut a log of the right length from it. Then I went to work on the log. I chopped and hewed and shaped the outside into the form of a canoe. With hatchet and chisel, I hollowed out the inside. For full three months, I worked on that cedar log. I was both proud and glad when the canoe was finished. I had never seen so big a boat made from a single tree. It was well shaped and handsome. More than twenty men might find room to sit in it. But now the hardest question of all must be answered. How was I to get my canoe into the water? It lay not more than three hundred feet from the little river where I had first landed with my raft. But how was I to move it three hundred feet, or even one foot? It was so heavy that I could not even roll it over. I thought of several plans, but when I came to reckon the time and the labor, I found that even by the easiest plan it would take twenty years to get the canoe into the water. What could I do but leave it in the woods where it lay? How foolish had I been! 
why had I not thought of the weight of the canoe before going to the labor of making it? The wise man will always look before he leaps. I certainly had not acted wisely. I went back to my tent, sad and thoughtful. Why should I be discontented and unhappy? I was the master of all that I saw. I might call myself the king of the island. I had all the comforts of life. I had food in plenty. I might raise shiploads of grain, but there was no market for it. I had thousands of trees for timber and fuel, but no one wished to buy. I counted the money which I had brought from the ship. There were above a hundred pieces of gold and silver, but of what use were they? I would have given all for a handful of peas or beans to plant. I would have given all for a bottle of ink.